Hey friends, it's Mari. Welcome back to my channel today. I have a card making process video for you using some Lawn Fawn products to create this fun little interactive card here that I'm just going to start off by showing you. Uh, this is a finished product. This is a birthday card that I made mostly with the Let's Toast uh, stamp and die set. So I'm going to show you that stamp set here. It's just a really, really cute little stamp set that includes a toaster, an avocado, some toast, a little breakfast pastry, and so on. These are the dies, and I'm also going to be using the Let's Toast Pull Tab add-on die set to create the interactive portion of my card today. I'm going to be using some other products from Lawn Fawn too, including these Valentine border dies. I'm going to be using a couple of the borders out of that set. I'm also going to be using the Lawn Fawn Wavy Sains stamp, the happy birthday stamp and one of the dies from that die set. And I'm going to be using some of the Lawn Fawn Perfectly Plaid papers. This is from the Perfectly Plaid Fall. And I'm also going to be using the Perfectly Plaid Rainbow. I'm just going to be using a sheet of paper from each of those pads. I'm also going to be using a little bit of the Lawn Fawn Sparkle cardstock in Pixie Dust. This is so pretty. I love it. And, and, this, and again, this is my final card. This is the little product that I'm going to be creating here for you today. I'm going to be using a few of the Nouveau Drops to create the little um, sprinkles on my little breakfast pastry. And these are Red Berry, um, Ripen Pumpkin, and Caribbean Ocean. Okay, so I am all ready to go. Those are all my products and here is the process. So I'm going to start off here with my Misty. I'm going to little, put a little piece of that uh, plaid paper into my Misty and I'm going to stamp out my toaster. And I'm going to stamp that out using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. It's just going to create a really nice crisp impression. And I'm going to stamp the toaster out and then I'm also going to use one of the face stamps from the Let's Toast stamp set to create a little face on my toaster front too. I think those little faces are so cute and I think it's just a really neat way to add a little bit of detail to some of the little images that you might be using in your card. So I'm going to use the largest face, um, the little eyes and, and mouth that will go onto my toaster here. I'm going to stamp that out again with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and just gonna clean that off when I'm done and get ready to, I think, maybe stamp out my pastry next. So we're just gonna get that all cleaned up and ready for the next thing that I am going to stamp. So um, this is just such a really cute way to create a little bit of texture and interest on your toaster because that pattern paper then just creates the, the um, texture on that little toaster. So I'm going to also stamp out the little cheeks for my toaster as well. And I'm going to take the, the little cheek image from that stamp set. I'm going to use a little bit of bright pink ink on there. I'm going to stamp that a couple of times just to make sure that's nice and bold on the cheeks of my little toaster. And my toaster then will be all finished and ready to die cut. There is a die obviously then for this, this stamp set. Um, or for this image and it just really cuts out a really nice image of this little toaster. So next I'm going to stamp out the little pastry that's going to go in my toast. I'm using some Copic Friendly paper here. This is Nina 80 pound cardstock and I'm also using some Copic Friendly ink here. This is um, <laughs> Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I'm going to uh, do some Copic coloring on my little breakfast pastry here. So that is why I wanted to use the Copic Friendly ink. I'm gonna get that stamped. And then I am going to do a little bit of Copic coloring on both my pastry and on the little toaster there. So I'll get that all cleaned up and ready for some coloring. I am going to give that ink a couple of seconds here to dry just so that it doesn't smudge when I get coloring here and you can see I am going to show you the lids of the markers that I use here in my process. So I'm going to use this uh, teal color here to color in the base of the toaster and then I'll also use a darker teal to color in the legs of the toaster and the buttons that are on the side of the toaster just so that it gives it a little more dimension. It looks a little bit more realistic so that it's just not the patterned paper there. That's also the um, the knobs and the, the bottom of the toaster there. So I just think it looks a little bit more interesting that way. And I'm just gonna go in and create a little bit of a shadow here 
on the bottom. And that's all the coloring I'm going to do on that toaster. I'm going to color the pastry now just with a, a yellow and a brown. I'm not gonna do any shading or anything like that. This isn't going to be any fancy coloring, just really, really basic. I'm just going to quickly color in the center of that pastry with a lighter color because I do want to create the sprinkles on top of that pastry, on top of the icing of the pastry. So now I'm just going in with a darker brown just to um, give that little edge of my pastry some kind of extra dimension and interest there with that coordinating color with the center just to make it look like it's been toasted. And then I'm going to take the little stamp that also comes with the Let's Toast stamp set and just stamp in some little sprinkles. Now what I did after is once I was all finished the card I decided I wanted to just add a little bit of extra dimension and so where I stamped those sprinkles I actually went over top of it with the Nouveau drops to give the sprinkles even more dimension and make them just like I said look a little bit more interesting and give the card a little bit more detail. Those are the just the really fun things that you can do when you're finished your card just to kind of do a little bit more to it to make it, just to give it more, more of those little fine details that make it look more interesting. Now I've cut out the toaster and I've cut out the uh, pastry. Now I'm just gonna take this single slit die. So there, there are two dies here that cut the holes in the toaster or the slots in the toaster. One is a single slot and the other is a double. I'm just gonna use a single here because I'm only going to be using that one pastry. Get those all put away again and that finishes up that so you can see how that just slides nicely up and down out of my toaster. So now I'm going to take the um, the additional dies that go along with this set to create the pop-up interactive piece. So this is going to be my card front. This is just some craft cardstock from my stash. I'm going to mark the center point on the, the card front using my ruler here and I'm just gonna then draw a line down the center and this is going to be where I can then cut the slot for that um, pull tab so that it will slide up and down. So I'm, I've got my line there where the center of the card is. Now I'm just gonna draw and trace along the top of my toaster so that I can see where my pull tab mechanism needs to start from. So I'm going to take that little tab, the, the slot to cut that little slit where my pull tab is going to cut through. The top of that is going to line up with where I put the line for the top of the toaster. And I'm gonna just get that cut. And that will provide a spot for that pull tab to slide through. So I'm just going to take my eraser now and I'm going to, I will be taking my eraser to erase that eraser mark on there. This um, is just cutting out that uh, pull tab mechanism and now what I wanted to do is just take that die to cut where that pull tab will go at the top. So just line it up at the top, make sure that the actual little um, pull tab divot there is in the center of the card. And now that that's all done, I'm going to fold on the score lines of the pull tab. So it's just an in and out fold. So it's like a little zigzag fold on those score lines to create this little tab, which is where you're going to glue your pastry to. I'm just gonna um, use my bone folder just to make sure that those score lines are nicely folded and nice and crisp. And then what I'll do is take and um, erase my, uh, my pencil lines, like I mentioned before. And now I'm going to actually uh, put that pull tab through the little slot to create my pull tab mechanism here. Now, one thing that I wanted to tell you a little tip here is make sure when you're putting the adhesive on that little tab where you're going to glue the pastry to, make sure that you get adhesive on the whole entire surface because you don't want any part of that not to be stuck to your pastry because it will catch on the slot in your toaster when it's pulling through. And so it's really important to make sure that that's stuck really well. I burnish it here with my bone folder just to make sure that it's really adhered well. And then I just made sure that there wasn't any adhesive stuck to the, behind the, the little pastry there that might interfere with it sliding well. And then I'm just gonna practice here a little bit and make sure that it's sliding nicely. 
Now there's also a little sleeve and this is one of the one of the dies uh, cuts this little sleeve. There's actually a little mistake that I make here. I actually glued it to the wrong side. That glue, the adhesive, should be against the card front, not against the pull tab because it will then keep the sleeve in place. And I don't know how I managed to do this, but I did. And just so you can see, it actually will, it does still slide back and forth side to side a little bit because I didn't stick it down to the actual card front. So just something for you to think about. I just want, I kept that in. I didn't uh, delete it and redo it because I wanted to show you this is what you don't do and this is why. Sometimes you can learn from another crafter's mistakes, right? This is the little pull tab top that goes on the top of the pull tab just to show that there's an interactive piece here to indicate to the recipient of the card that they need to pull that piece up. You can see that I cut the excess piece of that pull tab off so that it's nice and even at the top when it's down. And then that little pull tab piece fits on there. So now I'm just gonna take my little toaster and I'm going to put four little pieces of adhesive on the back. And I'm going to use those little adhesive pieces obviously to stick my toaster down. I'm just gonna um, feed my toaster through my little pastry piece. I'm going to line it up so that the pastry is just at the very top of the slot when it's in the down position so that when it's pulled up, it pops up like that with the maximum amount of the pastry showing from the toaster. So that is all good to go. Now what I did was I just sized my card front down a tiny little bit, just a quarter of an inch on the sides and the bottom because I do want to adhere it to a card base. I'm also just, uh, you can see there stamping the sentiment, popping, uh, popping up to say dot 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 and I just am embossing that with some clear embossing powder. I'm going to take a piece of the perfectly plaid fall paper in orange and I'm going to adhere my card front to the back of that just to give a little bit of color variation and this goes nicely with the colors in the pastry. I'm going to pop that up on some foam adhesive just so that it um, has some space between that plaid paper and my card front so that that mechanism still slides nicely. And that'll just add also a little bit of dimension to my card front as well. So I'm gonna get that all stuck down. And that will provide a really nice card front for my card base, which is going to be kind of a teal colored card stock. Just testing that out, making sure it's still working nicely, making sure that the toast is, or the, um, the pastry is coming up there nicely. You can see here that I uh, cut this little piece of pixie dust cardstock with that little border to create a little uh, base for my toaster. And I've I'm going to adhere that down just underneath the toaster there just to give it, to make it look like it's actually sitting on a ledge or something. It's not just floating in the air. And the heart, that little heart border die um, cuts out these perfect little tiny hearts and I love those and I wanted to use them as a little embellishment on my card front and I'm going to just use a little bit of the Lawn Fawn glue and my tweezers to glue those little hearts down just to embellish the front of my card. Now I am going to finish the inside of my card off um, as well here very quickly with my happy birthday sentiment. I'm just gonna get this little border piece stuck down again with my Lawn Fawn glue and a piece or a pair of tweezers are super handy for card makers. Everybody that makes cards knows that. I use my little tweezers too a lot when I'm scrapbooking. I just love these things. Um, they're amazing. And I think they're We Are Memory Keepers tweezers. I'm gonna take a little bit of my tube glue again and I'm going to use that to adhere down my card front to my card base and get that nicely stuck down there. And then I will finish off the inside with that wavy sayings border by stamping out one of the wavy sayings onto the border that is pre-cut and I'll show you that here right away and my card will be finished. So I'm just gonna show you here, I'm gonna stamp out this wavy saying onto a piece of white cardstock that I've already cut with the border with the wavy banner die and my wavy banner sentiment is happy birthday and that finishes off my little happy birthday card. I hope you liked this today. I hope you enjoyed this video and this was a really super fun card to make. It was really easy and I love these Lawn Fawn products so much. Thanks so much for stopping by guys. I'll see you another time. Bye-bye.